Good morning. This is White Raptor News Ministries. All praise and glory to the Supreme Spirit of Truth, the Living One, the Authority, the Author, the Writer, the Supreme, the Spirit of Truth, the Living One, the Presence of the Almighty. There is none like the Spirit. You know, since I found this Gematria calculator, my progress in defining 666 for you, the listeners, has, I mean, there's no comparison. Where it would take me, you know, literally minutes to, you know, take a word, think of a phrase, add up all the numbers, and then come up with the, a 666, which, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time doesn't come up to 666. But since I found this Gematria cal calculator, um, I would say for every one entry that I could do, the way I was doing it before, is I can do anywhere from 25 to 40 different entries. It's so much faster. And where in two years where I found two 666s, six, six, I had already made a connection to Jesus being 666. Six, six. Now, I haven't found anything that I can write in the Gematria calendar that brings Jesus to 666. Six, six. But John chapter 1, verse 1, Bible Hub Remember, the parable that we're talking about here is Revelations 13, 18. And it says, here's a call for wisdom. Let the one with insight calculate the number of the beast, for it's the number of a man. So the beast is a man, and the man's number is 666. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. This is, this is simple gematria, and it allows me to show you the work myself. So when you come to simple gematria, the word comes to 60. If you break this down, 6 plus 0, that's 6. And this word said three times in the parable, 1, 2, 3, would be 666. Six, six. Jesus also says that he's the beginning, and the beginning is time. Time is 60 seconds, 60 minutes, 24 hours in a day. 2 plus 4 is 6. All right? Jesus, in John 13, said... You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. So right now, people didn't understand, right? Because eyes, the scales are coming off of people's eyes. And my best analogy to explain to you the way that the spirit is, is if the spirit is the ocean, then we are drops in the ocean. We are all of the spirit, both good and evil, weaved within one another. It's us that are two-faced gods. I mean, Paul, he's two-faced. So also, when you look here, it says Jesus and two other Israelites. Okay? Iesus is the pronunciation for G Jesus. This is a breakdown from Hebrew origin. Jesus, the name of our Lord, and two other Israelites. Well, Israelites, Israelites are men. So... They're saying here that Jesus is Lord and that there are also two other Israelites. But pay attention that also Jesus' number in this is 2424. And 2 plus 4 is 6. And 2 plus 4 is 6. And Jesus is the Christ. 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, The God of this age, and this is Elohim, a lowercase God, 2316, a theos, a deity, especially the supreme divinity. How can a lowercase god be a supreme divinity? Because it's the god of this realm here, the one that was given power. Remember now, all gods that are on this plane of existence were given God power. You see, we're the gods. But what's happened is our slave masters, the governments, have hijacked this reality and made you think that uh, they are gods and worship their God, which is money. 
So the God, the government of this age, has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel. And the gospel is a ghost spell of the glory of Christ. So Christ is 5547, Christo, and uh, also the Christ, the anointing one. Now, so here you see the breakdown of where Christ comes from, the anointed one, which is Christos. So this is another connection here when we come to our calculator and we type in Christos. Christos comes to 666. So what's really odd about all these things as well that I'm sharing with you about this parable right here, 1318 Bible Hub, is all the connections that I'm making here with 666 seem to be all religious connections. Well, what do I mean? Well, isn't, don't we tie Santa Claus into religion? Santa Claus comes down a chimney and Santa Claus's uh, number comes to 666 in English, Gematria, and then that cap ties you in here. See, when you make start making these connections and you use this, now people will say that I'm practicing sorcery because I'm using Gematria. I need you to understand that before letters were ever invented, numbers came first, and then letters were assigned a number, and then that's how Gematria was created. So all I'm doing is show, everything that existed in, in letters and stuff right then was kind of like the binary code where ancient uh, texts written by numbers, a binary code, a computer code, and then letters were designed. And for them, letters meant symbols and symbols meant things. To us, they were only sounds. We've been taught that letters are sounds. Letters are not sounds. They are symbols. And when they are put together, they speak a language that we do not understand. It's the serpent language. It's a devil speak language. This is why the word gory is in glory and sin is in sincere because it is a split tongue. And they. this is why the emblem for NASA is a split tongue. The vector is a split tongue because never again... Uh, never a straight answer. That's what NASA stands for with the split tongue. So Santa Claus comes up the 666. Santa Claus comes down your chimney through the fire. Santa Claus's anagram is Satan. And then I share all this stuff. And like my brother and I, we ain't talked for two years since my mother's passed away. It hasn't been... The last seven, since my brother turned 65 years, him and I have kind of had a fallen out with one another. And I've made all these connections and stuff. And I try to share this content with my family and bring them this very spiritually fed, enlightened message. And I make these connections. And my brother, all he can say is, well, I, I don't agree with you. Well, it's easy to tell somebody that you don't agree with them. Why doesn't my brother want to talk to me? Because he can't substantiate an argument. To And my brother used to be a great debater, man. In fact, he, he um, in the high school, uh, he was a part of the debate club. And, he, and actually, he was, he was pretty damn good. And I, I would have never thought that I could have stood against my brother to debate something. But it's kind of funny when you start learning things like the scriptures, you start learning things like the pineal gland, uh, biology, your body, uh, a little fed with a little spirituality, some spiritual prosperity. When you start talking about uh, the moon landings and presenting these ideas that, that, that they're all fake, when you start talking about corona and Corona has six letters in the spelling. When you add the sum of the word Corona, it comes to 66. I mean, these are, aren't are by uh, accident, folks. I have stumbled 
across the truth. And Corona adds the 66 in simple, um, simple gematria. And when you, and it has six letters in the spelling. So coronavirus is 666. Okay. It's part of this, the system that we live in. I'm showing, look, the parable calls for wisdom and insight. And it's talking about a man, mankind. And mankind's number in simple gematria comes to 66. And mankind was created on the sixth day of creation here in Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, Bible Hub. Genesis chapter 1, verse 27, Bible Hub. You rotten little bitch. See, they start messing with my voice commands and stuff. I don't know what they do, but they do it. Clearly, you heard me say it twice. So God created man. This man is Adam. The, it's the first man, Adam. All right? And it is mankind. This is not a man. All right? This is why you got to read many versions of the Bible because so God created mankind. Mankind are Gentile, all right? Man are human. And this is how Satan has grafted himself inside of the Bible. This is how this God here, Elohim, all right? Elohim, when we come back over here to the Strong's Concordance or to the Gematria cal calculator and we type in Christos, Sorry, Christos doesn't have two S's. But when we type in Christos, it comes to 666. And Christos in Hebrew is 430. And then that would tie you into 430 right here of the Strong's Concordance Elohim. That, I, man, I'm buffering at my own information that the Spirit has put it on me to learn this information and share it. And people, Christians, Christians and Israel, they just refuse. Well, I, I've never seen any Israelite teach 666. Yah is Lord. That's their God. That's, Yah is 666. Okay, look. God of Israel. God of Israel 666. So I'm making all these connections to you. And all these connections have to deal with um, religion. Religion is what's evil on the face of this earth. All religions are evil on the face of this earth. That's why you have so many damn atheists that don't believe. Because they don't they don't understand the Bible. You understand what I have what's what I talk about has been gifted to me. This is a special gift, all right, that has been put upon me to share with you people and bring you into understanding about the 666 system. So it has everything to do with this man, this God that created mankind in his image because an image means to shade a phantom. Our souls our light, our essence, our being, who we are, has been shaded in a skin suit, okay? And it has made us phantoms. That's why they call the phantom of the opera. This is why all military aircraft are called F-14 phantoms. This is why they're called uh, 130J ghost riders, because I'm showing you that we live in a system that is a 666 system. So this one here, that's created on the sixth day of creation is an idol. So if you look at the Strong's Concordance here, this man that's created on the sixth day is an idol. All right. And they've taken that out. Okay. I've been, they, they're making changes to this all the time. This information they're making changes to all the time, folks. You understand? So this God that created himself let me show you. Created him. This God, this is why God, self. So this God created him, self, in an image, which is a phantom, okay? 
created himself a phantom and he created him a male and female. And this is all taking place on the sixth day of creation. This has to deal with that man. This is the man of perdition right here. This is the man that is 666. Who is it? Right here. First Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 Bible Hub. Oh, really? See how it's so difficult to type with this camera in front of my... Really? Okay, this is another connection for you. The sun is the image. Jesus is the image. This God here, Elohim, Christos, which touches 430 Elohim, created him, self, in an image. This is why God says here, Jeremiah chapter 16, verse 19, Bible Hub. See, these guys are messing with my commands, man, pissing me off. Hold on. Okay, remember, O oh Lord, this is Yahweh. This is God of Israel. God of Israel comes to 666. O oh Lord, my strength and my fortress, my refuge. In the day of distress, the nations, this is the Gentile nations, learning how to read the Bible. What's a Gentile? I mean, what you, better question to ask, what is the difference between a Gentile and a Jew? or an Israelite, or a Hebrew, okay, or a man, or a human. That that would be the titles to the second creation, okay? And I watched a movie the other day, man, I called uh, Jupiter Ascending, and this character who's being played as Balaam says that he created all he created, he created it to be destroyed, truth bombs in Hollywood. Check out that movie, Jupiter Ascended, about portals, being able to time travel, uh, how demons use these. For See, when they talk about aliens, folks, it's us. We're the aliens. We're the beasts. We're the advanced race. It's us. It's nothing else. And a Gentile is a jinn, which is tiled in, tr in flesh. A Gentile is a troop of animals or a flight of locusts. Right here. These are your beasts of the field, each according to their kinds. These are your troops of animals. These are your flights of locusts. Can't break it down any simpler for you than that. Can't be broken down. If you're not receiving this message, then you wear scales on your eyes. Okay? You were predestined because this is the simplest information. It can't be denied. So... Here says that the nations, the Gentile nations, these are the Gentile nations, all these flights of locusts, all these troops of animals, they're the Gentile nations that will come to you, the ends of the earth, and say, our fathers, our ancestors, our leaders, our government, our officials inherited nothing but lies. Worthless idols, that man that created himself on the sixth day of creation is an idol. It is idol worship. This is what God doesn't want us doing, is worshiping the principalities, worshiping the stars, worshiping the fallen stars. You have made them idols. This is why you have shows called American Idol. It's right in your face. It's us. We are the idols. Here, King James Bible says, O Lord, my strength and my fortress and my refuge in the day of affliction, 
The Gentile again shall come unto you from the ends of the earth and shall say, surely say, Our fathers have inherited lies from our leaders, us. We're liars. We lie to our children about a fat man, Santa Claus, coming down the chimney. And you lie to your children as a hive. The entire freaking nation in on a lie teaching your children about a fat man who comes to 666 down your chimney that ties in with Christos, which is 666. Vanities of yourself. This is your idol worship right here, your idol worship of yourself. This is vanity of yourself and things where there will profit you nothing. What is that? The idols over here. You see how I put that together for you? Beautifully. Can't be taken away. So Romans here, 125 said, they exchanged the truth about the spirit of truth for a lie and worshiped and served the creature. Well, who's the creature? Who's everybody talking about? Being born a new creature in Christ, in Christos. You're being born a new creature in the devil who is forever worthy of praise, the supreme spirit of truth, the living one. When you say amen, you give praise to a God called Amen-Ra. You don't understand. You don't study. You don't study yourselves approve. I'm, today I'm in a world and I'm in a world by myself screaming a message to both Gentile and Israel, man. I have found out the truth about this Bible. And the gods of this Bible in Hollywood is telling you the movies that they are writing for you today in Hollywood are, are stories taken straight out of the Bible but sold to you in a science fiction uh, format. And then you buy into the garbage and you think that it's, that it's real. So here, Romans chapter 3, verse 7, Paul, the apostle, the apostle that writes most of the New Testament. However, if my falsehood accentuates God's truthfulness, however, if my lie glorifies God's truthfulness to increase of his glory, why am I still condemned a sinner? Because Paul is a liar. For if the truth of God hath more bound through my lie unto his glory. So Paul is telling you he's a liar. And I'm telling you, it, it blows me away when, when Christians say, well, that's not what it means. You're taking it out of context. Listen, folks, you can't tell me shit. You can't tell me anything. When you can substantiate a better argument about 666, put it down in the comment section. Guess what? Silence. Chirping. Crickets. Nobody has anything to say because you can't deny what I'm showing to you. Romans 3, 4 says, Certainly not. Let God be true and every man a liar. That means both Israel and Gentile are both liars. There ain't anybody on the face of this earth that's walking around in complete truth that's in power. Okay? The, the lie and the truth are bound to one another. You can't have duality without one or the other. You can't teach what's good if you don't have something that's evil and you can't teach evil if you don't have something that's good. It's all by design. The supreme spirit, the living one, God of love, purity, okay? Above all, who's in power of everything, all right? But don't think that the lower realm, that he allowed a divinity of himself. See, he made Satan just the way you are and the way I am. We feel separate from one another. We don't feel that you and I are equal to one another. We don't feel any of that. It's the same way with Satan. The creator gave Satan extreme power. He gave it to him. All right? He uses Satan as a tool to correct, to correct us. He created all the evil. And then he said, don't participate in it. 
I created it. Don't participate in it. And the effects of participating in the evil are doing drugs. Are you with your head between your knees saying, why is this always happening to me? That's the whole reason why. So now we're going to bust into uh, judges. Give me one second. You know, I got to say, before I started reading the Bible and stuff myself and and learning all this information, and the stories that you read in the Bible and what you're watching on television are completely diluted from one another. All right. They're, they don't, they don't hold much weight anymore. But I'm telling you, when I was younger, I used to love the story of Samson. And I thought, wow, man, Delilah, whew, what a, what a retching wench she was, right? One day, Samson went to Gaza, where he saw a prostitute. Hmm, God's chosen child sees a prostitute. He went in to spend the night with her. Wow. So you got a choice. <laughs> you got to ask yourself here. Ugh. God, I'm buffering. I mean, I'm really buffering here. So is uh, Samson a righteous man if he's spending time with the prostitute? And when you read this scripture here, there are passages that lead you to believe that they're talking about Jesus, but not one time is the name Jesus used. Now, we're told that it's used 30 times in the Old Testament. Well, it's over 1,127 times Jesus' name is used in the New Testament. So as if, if his name was so prevalently used in the New Testament writings, why wouldn't have it been the same in the Old Testament? Because I'm trying to teach you that there are two different nations of people. There are Gentile nations and then there is a human race. The human race had the breath placed on it. And the creator of Israel, God of Israel, which comes as 666, told Israel, if you participate in all of the sin, I am going to hand you your asses. And he has been handing you your asses ever since. So the people of Gaza were told, Samson is here. So they surrounded the place and lay in wait for him all night at the city gate. They made no move during the night saying, at dawn we'll kill him. But Samson lay there only until the middle of the night. Then he got up and took hold of the doors of the city gate together with the two posts and tore them loose, bar and all. He lifted them to his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill that faced Hebron. Some time later, he fell in love with a woman in the valley of Sorek whose name was Delilah, the rulers of the Philistines went to her and said, See if you can lure him into showing you the secret of his great strength and how we can overpower him so we may tie him up and subdue him. Each one of us will give you 1,100 shekels of silver. Money. The evil of money. The payoff of money. If you're starting to notice everything's about money, so money back then was the start. It's it's the root, okay? It's it's one of the I I should say that it's the stock. It's not the root. The root of evil is is well, I guess I'd have to say Yahweh if he's 666 and he's the father and I'd have to say that Jesus is the evil because you have one Jesus that says that he's of love and then you got another Jesus that says he's coming to destroy the the earth, that he's coming to judge the earth. Samson answered her, If anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstrings that have not been tried, I'll become as weak as any other man. Then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh bowstrings that had not been tried, and she tied him with them. With men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, 
the Philistine, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the bowstrings as easily as a piece of string snapped when it comes close to a flame. So the secret of his strength was not discovered. Then Delilah said to Samson, You have made a fool of me. You lied to me. Come now, tell me how you can be tied. Why? <laughs> Why, Samson? <laughs> Were they that kinky back then? A uh, possibility. You know, nothing changes. We're all the seed of Satan. And one of the greatest things on the face of this earth that was given to us is sex. The power, but it was, it wasn't supposed to be sex. It was supposed to be used for procreation. Okay. We're not supposed to serve our flesh every time we, we feel like, you know, getting it on, man. You're supposed to contain yourself and gird up your, your, your Christos, your chrism. You're supposed to gird up your Christ. The Christ is an anointing. It's the anointing oil that's produced in the corpus callosum. Folks, I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about what anybody ever says to me anymore about religion. I'm going my own way with religion. I don't trust anybody that teach any religion. I don't trust these people at all. You can't trust mankind. You have to go through the shit and you have to go through the fire to, to raise up purified like silver and gold. Folks, believe me, I was radiated like, like four and a half years ago. I was radiated by something. Something came upon me. Something left me. Uh, something burned. Uh, I shook like I stuck my hands in an electric socket. I was thrown to the ground. I don't care what anybody says. This is why people may not want to hear what you're trying to say to them is because you tell them, Stories like that, and, and they can't comprehend what a person goes through when, when the scales are ripped off your eyes. He said, if anyone ties me securely with new ropes that have never been used, I'll become as weak as any other man. So Delilah took new ropes and tied him with them. Then, with men hidden in the room, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. But he snapped the ropes off his arms as if they were threads. Delilah then said to Samson, All this time you've been making a fool of me and lying to me. Tell me how you can be tied. He replied, If you weave the seven braids of my hair head into the fabric on the loom and tighten it with the pin, I'll become as weak as any other man. So while he was sleeping, Delilah took the seven braids of his head, wove them into a fabric, and tightened it in the pen. Well, huh, huh. At this point in time, you know, if you're Samson and you wake up and she keeps asking you this question, you got to start asking yourself, you know, why are you doing this to me, woman? You know, you keep calling me a liar and every time I wake up, I'm tied up and stuff and you're telling me that the Philistines are upon me. You mean to tell me that Samson is such a stupid idiot, he can't figure out that this woman's up to something, that she's ready to backbite his rear end, that she's a snake? Come, This is how powerful a woman's beauty is. I'm telling you, straight up, if I knew what I knew today, the power of a woman would have never loomed over me. And that's the truth because uh, my weakness, if, if I was Samson, my weakness would have been what was between the woman's legs all my life. Sex, laying down and fornicating, that was the biggest weakness of my life. Okay. Again, she called to him, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke from his sleep and pulled up the pen and the loom with the fabric. Then she said to him, How can you say I love you when you won't confide in me? <laughs> Who's buying this story now, man? Really? I would have done left that winch. No, no, I take that back. No, no, not with what I've been through. It took a lot for me to realize this last woman I dated... She she showed me the evil of the world, man. She's she worked me all right. <laughs>
No doubt about that. Okay. I love you when you confide in me. This is the third time you've made a fool of me. And having told me the secret of your great strength with such nagging, she prodded him day after day until he was sick to death of it. So day after day after day, does that mean that every time, day after day after day, she tied him up again, she bound him up again? Yeah, I think I, this is how scales are on your eyes, how a woman can place scales on your eyes and you just, you can't see through their wickedness. And I'm not saying that all women are wicked, but those that are the seed of Satan and not and not realizing that you're a beast are absolutely manipulators. They're weak. They're thieves. Women are really bad thieves. They are criminals, man. I mean, pff, really, folks. Believe me when I tell you, young kids, if you're listening, man, don't just lay down with any woman. Don't do it. You know, because a lot of women are out there just looking for one night stands and they'll go through your wallets. They'll steal your money. They see any jewelry around thinking, you know, it's a one night stand. They ain't never going to see you again. They will rip you off. I'm not lying to you. So he told her everything. No razor has ever been used on my head, he said, because I have been a Nazarite dedicated to God from my mother's womb. If my head were shaved, my strength would leave me and I would become as weak as any other man. When Delilah saw that he had told her everything, she went, sent word to the rulers of Philistine, come back once more, he has told me everything. So the rulers of the Philistines returned with the silver in their hands. After putting him to sleep on her lap, she called for someone to shave off seven braids of his head and so began to subdue him and his strength left him. Then she called, Samson, the Philistines are upon you. He woke from his sleep and thought, I'll go out as before and shake myself free. But he did not know that the Lord had left him. Then the Philistines seized him, gouged him, gouged out his eyes and took him down to Gaza, binding him with bronze shackles. They set him to grinding grain in the prison. But the hair on his head began to grow again after it had been shaved. The death of Samson. Now the rulers of the Philistine assembled to offer a great sacrifice to Dagon, their God, and to celebrate, saying, Our God has delivered Samson, our enemy, into our hands. So I think you guys should go watch the movie Jupiter Ascending and watch that scene where Balaam is saying that he created he all that he created he created to destroy. So you got a God that was given power, and this God that was given power loves to destroy. It is not the supreme creator, folks. We're trying to get back to the God of love, to the God of purity, the God of pure light, not the Dahmer light, not the fallen light, not the God that was given power, not the ones that are used, not the lower, not our ancestor, not our uh our ancestors that committed the evil and atrocities, not these people that are in power over you that you vote. You must stop voting for these people to rule over you. When the people saw him, they praised their God, saying, Our God has delivered our enemy into our hands, the one who laid waste our land and multiplied our slain. While they were in high spirits, they shouted, Bring out Samson to entertain us. So they called Samson out of the prison, and he performed for them. When they stood him among the pillars, Samson said to the servant who held his hand, Put me where I can feel the pillars that support the temple, so that I may lean against them. Now the temple was crowded with men and women. All the rulers of the Philistines were there, and on the roof were about three thousand men and women watching Samson perform. Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me. Please, God, strengthen me just once more and let me, with one blow, get revenge on the Philistines for my two eyes. 
Then Samson reached towards the two central pillars on which the temple stood, bracing himself against them, his right hand on the one and his left hand on the other, left hand, right hand, left wing, right wing. Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And then he pushed with all his might, and down came the temple on the ruler and all the people in it. Thus he killed many more than he died than while he lived. So that would be, whether you want to acknowledge it or not, that would be suicide. It would also be called murder because you're killing people for blinding you. They didn't take your life, but because they took your eyes, you took 3,000 lives. Now, I'm not, hey, I know and me as a two-faced God, I'd want to take the lives too as well. The lives too as well. But you got a little suicide going on here too. And the Lord says that you shall not kill. So if you're taking your own life, folks, and Samson did, then I wouldn't, I would say that he didn't make it to the Supreme Kingdom. But then I would say that the Catholic Church is so adamantly against suicide that they will not do a burial for the family or anybody inside of their congregation if they have committed suicide. They're adamantly against it. Why do you suppose that is? That the Catholic Church is so adamant against suicide. Doesn't it say in the scriptures that the Lord will never let you take more than you can handle, that he will always be there to lift you? Well, folks, I'd have to say that a person who puts a gun to their head and blows it off was more than they could handle. So is this a clause in suicide? I'm not telling anybody to go out and blow their head off or pop some pills or hang themselves or anything like that. I'm just reflecting on the fact that the Lord has said that he'll never let you take more than you can handle. So if you're taking your own life, then I would say that that was more than you could handle. Or it was possible that those that we've been taught all our lives that have committed suicide may very well have been saved. I don't know that for a fact. I've never read it anywhere in the Bible. The Bible is adamantly against suicide. I'm just saying, somebody blows their head off, that's more than they could take. So then that would make the Lord a liar. So he's got to either save them or he's a liar. Then his brothers and his father's whole family went down to get him. They brought him back and buried him between Zora and Eshtolo in the tomb of Manoah. This father, his father, he had led Israel 20 years. All right, folks. Um, all praise and glory to the Supreme Spirit. I am a very humble servant. I have learned the riddle of 666. Neither Israel or Gentile can deny what it is I've learned, what I present to you, what I share with you. This plane of existence that we live in is a game. It is a Jumanja. If you participate in the game, then you can get killed. If you participate in the drugs of the game, then you can get killed. If you're doing home invasions inside this game and kicking in people's doors and doing what you're not supposed to do, then you can be killed. Now, are you dropped right back in the middle of this game again like they're showing us in Jumanja? You got to start watching programs. If you're going to watch Hollywood garbage, then you got to watch for what they're saying. You got to see them putting the truth right in front of your face because when it comes to day of judgment, Satan is going to be there prosecuting you and sharing to the Supreme Creator, look, I did this. I did this here. I showed them the truth. I gave them all the truth in Hollywood movies. I gave them the truth in the rap. I gave them the truth in the music industry. I gave them the truth on music. Uh, 
album covers. I gave him the truth with the government. If you people believe in your heart that you can continue, let me show you something. Look at here, folks. As of June 18, 2024, the United States national debt was $34 trillion. Now, I need you to understand that back 50 years ago, just 50 short years ago, the United States deficit was only $500 million. You think I'm lying? Watch this. As of March 31st, 2024, the Russian federal external debt was estimated to be $304 billion. <laughs> America is so busted off your ass and you guys keep saying how powerful you are. Folks, if a war breaks out, America ain't got the money to stay in a freaking war. Oh, but they just keep keep that money machine rolling, printing up fake fucking money, and then laying it on your heads, the taxpayers, and you guys keep voting them into office. You understand? That's five hundred million. We went to thirty four trillion. Not even not even the billions. We flew past billions like it was nothing at all, man. A billion dollars is nothing at all to the American people. And you keep voting them in the office. And then my family, oh my goodness gracious, man. When I saw my brother's Facebook account and he posts his political posts and stuff, he posted this Brandon post. And I went in there and there was a comment that, with a woman who said that, that I can't believe that these are our selections to choose from. And then I commented, I said, that's what I never understood is why if you know that these candidates are all you have to choose from, then why would you put one of them into power? Why would you vote for the lesser of two evils? Why would you thumb your nose up to the spirit, the truth, the living one? Because that's what you do when you're voting for mankind. You're placing them in power. You're the one that has power over them. But you're the one that gives your power up when you vote them into office. The whole system is ass backwards. The leaders are supposed to be servants. But the leaders have now made us their servants. It's backwards and you guys can't see it. You just keep voting for them year after year after year like they're going to fix things. I hope you wake up. Much love to all the children on this plane of existence that serve the spirit of truth, the living one. Stop calling on names of this plane of existence. I'm surely showing you that it seems all the gods of this plane of existence are 666. One last one for you. The Vedas, which is the Hebrew, Hebrew God. Oh, uh, let's see. Hold on. Well, it, it appears that I did something wrong. So, um, computer comes to 666. Let me leave you with that because we live inside of a simulation. Okay. That's proven here. 2 Corinthians 2.11 Bible Hub. Over here to the left, King James Bible. Lest Satan should get an advantage over us, for we're not ignorant, dead, dumb, wicked, blind, can't see of his devices. Devices are these electronical devices. Devices are this right here. Right here, folks. These are the devices. And CERN is telling you that this equipment is a time traveling machine. It can take us back to the very moment of the Big Bang. By explode, by slamming these protons into each other, they launch them on a pad, a magnetic pad. And they get one, one going one way and one going the other way. And then this laser that you're looking at right here, this laser is Boring a hole in the fabric of our reality, the veil that exists between this plane of existence and the other plane of existence. Okay, listen, humans 
Oh, and Gentile, just don't come up with these ideas. Whatever is being fed is being fed from the dark side because these are the devices that Satan is using against us, but nobody sees it. I see it. You know, when this world starts turning upside down and stuff, you got to remember everything that's going on around you is an illusion. But if you participate in the illusion, it can kill you. You If you go... In the illusion that they feed you about the war and then you you saddle up, man, and you hang a gun over there and you march into another country and you get yourself killed, you're gonna you're gonna fry. It. Well, and when you add soldier in the English gematria, it comes to six hundred and sixty six. Remember, beasts are created on the sixth day. That could be six six six. Also, look at the word soldier. It has the word die in it. It has both the word soul and die. So when you go into war, your soul dies. Why does the D-I-E-R make a jur sound? Why isn't this G and the I removed, the soldier? Because it's crafty, two language, and it's split. Our language is split. So when you die at war, your soul dies. You will remain here. You don't get off this plane of existence. Your eternal life, like the movie with Don, um, um, Tom Cruise, where he dies over and over and over and keeps waking back up, man, and he finds himself getting ready to go out on the battlefield again. That's what's going to be your eternal life, over and over and over. If hell doesn't exist, then I'm I'm pretty sure that the next best thing would that you could look at would be reincarnation, reincarnation to this plane of existence over and over and over. Immortality, birth, death, birth, death. You exhale your last breath, you're born into another avatar, taking your first breath, and you're given a memory wipe every time that you're brought into this plane of existence. Anyways, I hope you all learn the truth. If you have any comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. I like to read the comments. I like to hear other people's thoughts, their theology, what they're sharing. Um, you can share all the parables that you want. You cannot just say that I'm lying. This is a 666 channel. You must provide for me a better answer than what it is I've been sharing with you folks. Much love. This is White Raptor News Ministries.